Okay, so when I got an email from Andy sometime late last week asking if I could give the conference summary, there were two things I didn't know. One is that there would be another email the following day asking if I could stand in for Yannick. <laughs> um, and the other thing, having never done this before, is I didn't realize how, how it changes the way you sit in a conference. So was, I've never taken so many notes during a conference. I've never listened so well. Um, and it's actually something I can recommend to do once. <laughs> Um, I was also reminded of, of, um, of Bill Press, who gave the conference summary at a meeting in Melbourne in the early 90s, which I think was the first lensing meeting I ever attended. Um, and he started off by, by going on a point about how this was the first time he'd been asked to give a conference summary and how old it made him feel, how it made him feel that he'd made successfully the transition from somebody who's doing science to somebody who's considered as somebody that you can ask safely to do these things because he's not really doing science anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards everyone said, come on, you're exaggerating, you're fine. But sure enough, two years later, he was doing some big administration job at the Los Alamos. So <laughs> I'm a bit worried about this. But. Um, so I've had a great time this week. Um, when I saw the poster for this conference first, I was wondering, I, I tried to figure out what this, all this stuff in the sky meant. Um, I have a number of theories which I won't share with you because I think they're, they're probably wrong. I think I have one theory which is right, which is that all you have to do in Edinburgh is you have to do anything to make the sky not look like the way it really is. <laughs> <laughs> and you succeeded, so that's my theory. Um, the other thing that happened when I arrived on, uh, on Sunday was there was a photograph, there's this screen at the, at the reception, I'm not sure how many of you saw it. But it said this, welcome all the guests of Bellejas 2010. Those of you know Spanish means, Bellejas means beauties. <laughs> <laughs> so I was intrigued by this, so I've been trying to Google this conference to see what it was all about. And they don't exist, so they really must be us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll come back to this later. Right. So I'm not going to try to, to summarize all the, the science that we've heard over the last week. I think the panel discussion here was uh, actually a much better much better format for doing that. But I think a sort of top level summary is, is very simply that uh, lensing is a very important part of observational cosmology these days. And it's really transitioning from something which has always been talked about as something with lots of promise to something which is actually delivering. I think we've seen this week a lot of examples of real measurements, credible measurements, people thinking seriously about how the measurements might be wrong and coming up with interesting results that are you know, making cosmologists sit up and take notes. I think it's still only the beginning, there's clearly a lot more going to happen. So I think this is a field that's really beginning to deliver uh, after many, many years of, uh, of, to some extent, not delivering and uh, not being uh, quite consistent uh, between expectations and, and uh, delivery. So for me, Cosmic Chair uh, started in about 1990, which was the first time I heard of it. I was a postdoc at CETA. Um, and I remember a fantastic colloquium by Tony Tyson, who showed these first uh, weak lensing maps using, this was before the, the days of Kaiser and Squire, so the, the kernel was not quite what we would use now. But nonetheless, it, it really showed that there was something in the sky that we hadn't appreciated before. That you could, uh, there was real new information there. And at the time, Nick was at CETA too, and not, many, not, not long after that, Nick turned from somebody who thought about biases and power spectra into someone who thought about how you detect low signal to noise objects in CCD cameras. And, uh, did it all on the Mac, and it, all, uh, it was all very impressive. So that was my first uh, contact with Cosmic Shear. Then I, I ran away as fast as I could. And then uh, I went to this lensing conference in, in Melbourne at some point. But it's not really until the last five, six years that I started thinking about it seriously myself. Uh, of course, meanwhile, a lot of things happened. And in particular, 2000 is when the first detections of Cosmic Shear suddenly sprang onto the scene. Uh, lots of independent detections, different groups of people showing more or less the same results. And all of a sudden, this showed, hey, there's something here. And that was really only the beginning since then. People have been getting more and more ambitious and more and more worried about systematics and getting more and more serious about uh, doing a good job uh, of these results. And I think it's fair to say that this week we've simply seen that this line is going to continue uh, for quite a while. And it's an exploding field. And in particular, it's one where reality has really struck in a big way now. This, uh, most of the talks here this week, if you think about it, have not been about results, but have been about how results might be wrong. There's many, many ways of thinking marginalizing over nuisance effects and, and how, you, you know, how, how your results might be affected by things that you, you hadn't thought of before. And this list is getting longer every meeting. There's a, there's a few more items on the list, it seems. 
And so people are really now worrying about how you can use BMO type and get rid of them. Intrinsic alignments are a big thing, of course, but also very technical things like how do you clean up CCD images? Uh, how do you make sure that your point spread functional model is actually correct, even in places where you don't have stars? Uh, and, and the next ones are already pe peering around the corner, right? It's the chromatic effects things, which at the moment we don't quite know how to correct. People are beginning to worry about how, at least how serious they might be. Uh, and before long, Gary will write another paper about how you can correct them to a part in a thousand that's quite sure. And the other thing that's happening is that not only shear is the big focus of all these, these efforts, but also photometric redshift or something that people are now very seriously worrying about how, how biases in there can be, how big they can be. But it's not only been about systematics and techniques. There's actually, at this meeting, I think more than any other lensing meeting that I've been at, there's been lots of new, exciting results. And there's at least four surveys which have reported new results which look very credible and contain real information that we can do something with and that are already beginning to set interesting, uh, you know, pointing the way towards the, the, the cosmology measurements that we're all, we're all aiming for. CFHD lens has been very prominently visible here, but also the, the results from Sloan that just keep on coming in even though I'm not sure whether lensing was ever a science case for Sloan, uh, but it's, uh, it just shows what happens when you put the data out there and let people, let people work on it. Cosmos is still doing great stuff, uh, and we saw the beautiful results from the, the RCS2. Um, the one thing that certainly struck me, and I think will stick in my mind, and, and for many people quite a while, is this sky movie of the, the seeing drifting across the telescope as a sobering thought for how you can really have to deal with things which have nothing to do with cosmology, nothing to do with optics, nothing to do with your algorithms, but purely are facts of real life that you have to deal with when you're, when you're making real observations. We've had a lot of lively debates here. There were some provocative statements, which is always good to generate lively debates. Uh, Uros made the statement yesterday that uh, galaxy galaxy lensing may have been a plan B, but should be a plan A. I was certainly reminded of this discussion this morning during the the magnification session, where clearly uh, people were getting very pessimistic about plan A while plan B had just been presented as something that works very nicely. Um, but ways of extracting cosmology from all the, the lensing maps that people are producing uh, are just getting more and more sophisticated and more and more clever and new statistics and new techniques keep on, keep on coming up and we now have a, a row which is getting longer and longer and longer. Peak statistics, ring statistics, endpoint statistics, tomography, magnification. Uh, new ways of running Monte Carlo chains. And I'm pretty sure that before long somebody will make ring statistics of peak statistics and the 3D distribution of them and the clustering of them and the biasing in them. So it, just, it just gets, uh, well, I was going to say worse and worse and worse. It just gets more and more and more complicated. Uh, we had a lot of uh, discussion on, on shape measurements again because we do have this, this nerdy crowd in here. There's more than three people that worry about this. So they automatically start talking about these things. And also the list of, and this is something that's slightly worrying in a sense, the list of techniques that people use is getting longer and longer and longer as well. And basically every survey seems to have its own two different techniques. And I think there we will need some consolidation in order to convince people outside this room. And that's why these projects like STEP and Great 08 and Great 10 and so on are, are so very important. <laughs> on the simulation side, there's a lot going on as well. Uh, and what's... what's uh, I think new in the last few years is that there are more and more simulations specifically designed to address lensing issues. It's not that people take the Millennium simulation and try to see what it would do for lensing. There's a lot of that also. But many people are now thinking about exactly how to simulate things which, with which you can, you can really probe the lensing observables that you're trying to get out of real data. And that goes to N-body simulations uh, like uh, NEOS, for example. But also, uh, people are making simulations of really dirty data sets, you know, real images on the sky with all the, the warts and all in there and try to see what you can get out. And then some people are just using it as an excuse to buy, play video games. <laughs> and I think the, the, the point here is that simulations, for a few years ago this was not the case, people were very worried about this, but I think still simulations are ahead of the data. We're not really theory limited in terms of um, you know, analyzing the, the cosmic shear information from real data sets. And that probably says partly something about the data sets which are, uh, which are slow to come out. But it also says something about the speed with which computer resources just keep on exploding. 
So in summary, I think it's been a good meeting for me. It's, uh, there's been lots of discussions uh, on real things, not just chit chat. Uh, many people who are here with a very clear goal, which always focuses the, the discussion. I think there's been a lot of progress. It's also a nice crowd. I think most of us would agree, or we wouldn't have come. Um, and you know, I heard lots of new ideas, like you always do, do, do at these meetings. And a, it's always exciting when there's lots of new experiments and new, new things on the horizon. I think it's also a good field to be in. And I thought the poll of uh, people's age or how long people have been uh, active in Cosmic Share was very interesting just now. It really shows that there's a lot of people accreting into this field, and I think it's actually a good choice. I don't think it's a bad idea to do this. It's not a dangerous field that will gobble people up and make them disappear. 